Welcome to another edition of Lunchtime Live. Those of you uh, joining us at home, my name is Leah. I am the curator here at the Wild Center. And today we have a very special event happening. We are going to be celebrating the 20th birthday of Squirt the Otter. That's right. She is 20 years old today. I'm going to show you. She's right at my feet right now. There's Squirty. Say hi to the public, Squirt. <laughs> she wants fish what she really wants. So I'm going to back up a little and see if I can get us on camera. We have some special events planned for Squirty today. I'm going to do a little bit of training with her. We also have a birthday cake that our staff made. I don't know if you can see that on camera. It actually says 2-0. It's a little hard to say. Come on, everybody. Come on in. We're doing a little birthday celebration with Squirt the Otter today. And I'm also doing a live program for our visitors at home, so feel free to ask questions as I'm going along. Those of you just joining us, today we're celebrating Sport the Otter's 20th birthday. Now, in River Otter terms, she's quite the distinguished lady. They generally live about 10 to 12 years in the wild, so Sport has well surpassed her wild counterparts. And the reason behind that is probably a few things. She gets regular meals here at the Wild Center. She has excellent medical care. Whenever she needs to see a veterinarian, she does. She doesn't have to compete for resources. And when it's raining, she can be underneath this lovely um, ceiling we have right now, or she can choose to go be in the rain. So she is doing quite well for a 20 year old otter. And I'm going to get to work with Squirt here. So this, some of you joining us at home have probably seen before, this is called a target stick. And this is one of the things we train all of our animals here at the museum to do. Probably the first thing we train them to do. And really it's just they have to touch some part of their body to something. In this case, the pole. So for Squirt, she will touch her nose. Target the girl. And when she does, she gets something good for that. That was just a little piece of meatball. What this does for us is gets the animal used to learning with us. It's an easy behavior to teach. It also allows them to come close, but I still can give her space so she doesn't have to come right up to me. Because generally, wild animals, even when they've been around humans their entire lives, like Squirt has, they still want a little bit of space. And I can use this command to teach other things. If I want to teach Squirt to go to another place, target, good. I can move her around. We use this command a lot of times to teach the next thing, which is to go into a crate. If you have pets at home, you know what a crate is like. It's like a dog kennel. We'll teach them to go in that. And then if we need to transport them, say, to a veterinarian or a hospital or something like that, we can. So that's one of the things Squirty knows. Now being that she's a little bit of an older lady, one of the things I want to do with her is be able to really get a good look at her body and check out how she's doing. <laughs> Touch her a little bit, see how her joints are doing. We know she has a little bit of arthritis in her back knees. Anybody else have arthritis in their knees? I do, I do. Anybody at home have arthritis in their knees? Yep. So Squirt has a little bit of that. She's got a little bit of arthritis in her spine. We know that because we watch her behavior very carefully. And a few years ago, we noticed she was a little stiff, a little stiff first thing in the morning. Um, she showed some signs of maybe being a little bit of pain when she had to go up and down ramps. And then we did x-rays. We had our expert veterinarians do x-rays and we could see on the x-rays that her joints had changed a little bit. So because of that, we were able to establish a plan and put her on some medication that helps her. She's on some really mild pain medication 
just like taking an Advil or a Tylenol. She's also on basically what we would take like um, joint supplements. She's on that too, and they help quite a bit. So one of the things I'm doing in here is getting her to move around. I can do a little bit of physical therapy with her, try to get her to use those stiff joints a little bit, and I can also put my hands on her to see if you know she's having any extra trouble. But for a 20-year-old otter, she is doing really well. Anybody here standing here have questions for me? It's okay, you don't have to have questions. I'm gonna also check in with our audience at home. If you all have questions at home, feel free to drop them in the comments and I will do my best to watch while I'm doing this, but I'll come back afterwards and answer them as well. Oh, my birthday crown has gotten a little wet. <laughs> it's a little rainy here at the Wild Center today. Great question. So from the crowd here, where do we find the otters in the wild? Here in the Adirondacks, you can pretty much find them that there's anywhere there's good habitat. So wherever there's um, nice water where they can swim and there's good food to eat, they spend half their time in the water, but they will also spend quite a bit of time on land and they can move a long distance over land. So sometimes their home ranges are 30 miles wide. And in that home range, they're gonna go from one water body to the next. They like to eat a lot of fish. They'll also eat crayfish, freshwater mussels, and anything that else they can catch. If they can catch birds, they would eat them. If they can catch snakes, they would, but primarily their food is mostly coming from the water. So anywhere there's nice, clean water, you're gonna find them. Let me just check in with our, our audience at home. I'm trying to watch both audiences. Thank you everybody at home for joining us today. Again, if you have questions, feel free to pop them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Sport here came to us. That is very cool. I've never seen one of you like this. Yeah, so uh, one of our staff, Jane, who's head of our admissions in, in our cafe, just said she's never seen one of us in with an otter. And that is a good point, Jane, to bring up. What's happening right now is a little unusual. For the most part, we don't go right in with our otters, which is what Jane knows. Anybody at home want to guess why that is? I'll give you a hint. I'm wearing these for a very specific reason. I'm also wearing firefighter pants, just in case Squirt decided that she'd like to bite me. River otters have incredibly strong jaw muscles, as strong as a wolf, maybe even stronger. They need to be able to cut through fish flesh and break open freshwater mussels. So they have quite a strong bite. And they're also, in my humble opinion, a lot like puppies. So when they do bite, it's, it, it's sometimes just for fun. So I'm wearing all this protective gear. Now Squirt, being older, she's not as fast. We know that a lot of her teeth are worn down and she's the least likely to bite. So because of that and because she's elderly and I wanna do some physical therapy with her, I decided to take the chance and come in with her and do training and stuff like that. She's not that interested in her cake yet. But I just gotta show you how cute this is. So co-workers made her a cake that says 20. And I'm sorry, I'm not technologically advanced enough to know how to flip that so it's not backwards. <laughs> there's Jane from our cafe. But there's her cake. There um there's a uh, fish on it there's little meatballs so far she's not that interested she's more interested in checking me out i think oh and touching the target pole i know i, I don't have any more you ate it all okay i'm gonna check and see if there's questions i apologize if i'm missing your questions folks ah uh, thanks emily for thanking us we're so glad you're joining us Lots of people saying happy birthday, Squirt, who is at my feet. You can see her right now. She's like, hey, where's the rest of the fish? Oh. She's checking out, her, checking out her cake. Here she is checking out her cake. There you go. We have some more visitors joining us on site today. Welcome, folks. I am triple tasking right now. I am working with Squirt the Otter. We are celebrating her 20th birthday today. 
I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. And I'm also doing a digital program for our visitors at home. So I'll just show you. We have a little special birthday cake for sport. These are big icicles, and it has fish and meatballs, and it says 2-0 on it if you can't see from where you are. <laughs> That's Squirt's birthday cake. And I don't know if you can tell, Squirt's more interested in me. She's more interested in me than her cake right now. So, river ratters generally don't live to be 20 years in the wild. They live about 10 to 12 years on average in the wild. But here in captivity, she gets regular meals, she gets health care, the veterinarian comes to see her all the time, um, and she has a pretty good life. For being 20 years old, I think she looks really good. Let's see if we can get her to go swimming. Should we see if we can get her to go swimming? I'm gonna check and see if there's any questions at home. So here's one of her pools that she can go in. Let's see if I can convince her to get in it. Come here, Sprudy. strategic tires placed around for sport the otter. Of course, she's going to try it without the tires. And we have an elderly male who's turning 19 this year, and they both have a little bit of arthritis, so it's a little harder for them to climb up. So we try to use the tires as a little bit of a stair. I'm trying to pile, pile the tires up to help Squirty get up. You want to get up, Squirty? Check in with the folks at home. Lots of people saying happy birthday. Thank you all for joining us. We're so glad you're with us today. So Squirt came to us from a zoo in Michigan 15 years ago when we first opened. Um, that zoo actually was closing. So they had to work really quickly to find homes for all of the animals there. And they had heard about us, that we were a brand new museum opening. So they called us up and I had lots of long conversations with them about what our exhibit would be like and what our, our behind the scenes area would be like. And they eventually decided to play squirt with us. And believe it or not, she flew here on a private plane that landed in Saranac Lake. <laughs> she had a plane all to herself. Again, she's at my feet still. She's just try to show you. She's down at my feet. That's where she wants to be. So she flew on a private plane all by herself to come here to the Wild Center. And she's been here ever since. She was found as a baby otter in a farm field in Michigan by the farmer's dog. No mom around to take care of her and she was too small to take care of herself. So that's how she ended up in captivity in the first place. Because she was so little at the time, she got way too used to people. She's what's known as a human imprint animal. She didn't really learn all the behavior she needs to know to survive well on her own in the wild. And as you can tell, probably tell, she has no natural fear of humans. In fact, she would much rather be with humans than she would with other otters. So she actually never interacts with our other otters like this. She's never in an enclosure like this because she does not enjoy it. She'd much rather be with people. I'm just gonna give her a little scratch. One of the things Squirt loves a lot is to be scratched. And I'm sure when she was being raised by the zoo in Michigan, they did a lot of that. River otters as social creatures, when they're together, they do a lot of mutual grooming. So they will rub on each other's fur, will chew on each other's fur, They'll paw at each other's faces. They'll kind of do this at the face of another otter and that's to elicit grooming. And it helps keep their fur in really good shape. If you notice, Squirt looks a little bit wet right now, but that fur is so dense that her skin underneath it isn't getting wet. 
So they can survive all kinds of temperatures and weather. They're found here in the Adirondacks all year long. So even when it's negative 40 degrees in the winter, their fur keeps them totally okay. And she's, I just like to point out that she is like hanging out in a puddle right now. <laughs> it is raining today. So are you playing in the puddle? Are you playing in the puddle? <laughs> she also, sometimes her and I will uh, chase each other. We play chase in here because she likes that. And that's just a little bit of enrichment. It keeps her active and healthy. She enjoys it. like to point out that that's not bad for a 20 year old girl right she just got in there with no help the question was do we have a healthy population of otters so I'm gonna give you a little bit of history about otters in the Adirondacks and in New York um, river otters in New York were actually considered threatened for quite a while so they were heavily trapped for their fur especially early in the 1900s that fur, as I was just mentioning, it's really insulating, it's really waterproof, so people prize that fur. They did a lot of trapping, and there wasn't a lot of laws and trapping regulations at the time. That, combined with pollution in New York's waterways, um, sort of created this superstorm of affecting river otters. So their numbers went way low, and the state, in the 90s, decided to do a reintroduction program. So we cleaned up our waterways by then. They had put a moratorium on trapping at the time, meaning no more trapping. And what they did was they live trapped about 280 otters from the Adirondacks mostly and some from the Catskills. They took those otters and they released them all across the state. And now river otters, their numbers are back up. They're no longer considered threatened. Um, and there's actually so many otters that they've uh, reopened trapping season. Which, however you feel about trapping, it does mean that there's enough otters to support trapping and there are bag limits and seasons and all that. So there's actually a healthy population in New York now. There was always a pretty healthy population in the Adirondacks because the Adirondacks are sort of a really beautiful mix of people living in harmony with nature. The park is 6 million acres and it's mostly roadless. Um, so we have a lot of great habitat for animals just like river otters. Any other questions, folks? Sports showing up or swimming skills? Is anybody else feeling soggy today? Well, I want to thank all the visitors here in person today for visiting us in this soggy day and helping us celebrate Squirt's birthday. I feel like my birthday crown is uh, wilted a little bit. My birthday crown is uh, kind of gotten wet, falling over. So. Let me just check in with our audience at home and see if we have any questions. Thank you all again for joining us. We're really glad you're here. Squirty, everybody's wishing you happy birthday. How do you like your birthday so far? <laughs> I think she is enjoying it. All right, what else can I tell you folks? We have five otters total here at the Wild Center. The other four otters are down below where we are right now is their nighttime sleeping quarters. So basically their bedrooms. There are four bedrooms down there. Each one has a den box, a hammock, um, fire swings and toys and all kinds of stuff. And then the otters that are down there also have uh, access to our indoor exhibit right now. There's a tunnel that goes from this area into the building, into the exhibit, where there's an 8,000 gallon pool for them to swim in and dens to sleep in and all kinds of stuff. So our otters, we move them around from place to place every single day to get them, you know, a little exposure to land and water and weather and all kinds of stuff. Normally, you'd be seeing us inside the building during pandemic years, you know, we're doing this out here, but hopefully in the near future, we'll be opening that building back up and we'll be 
showing off the otters back in the exhibit, which is a cool place to see. That main, that, the main display then is in the inside. Their main like the exhibit tank. is inside. So where we are right now is called, we call it our otter play yard. This was always part of their behind the scenes holding area. So the exhibit is the fancy place where normally the public sees them. And this was always sort of behind a wall that you never got to see. Um, but because we just closed the building down, um, we wanted to be able to offer people a way to see them. And this is the best space to do it. So, um, yeah. So they have access to this every single day, whether, you know, we're, the visitors are here or not. All right, I'm gonna say goodbye to our visitors at, in the digital world. Thank you so much for joining us. I will look back and make sure I answer any questions that you may have asked. I hope you all are having a great day and send Squirty all your happy birthday thoughts. Thanks folks. Thank you.